What U.S. Customs and Border Patrol asked one New Jersey mayor who flew into JFK Airport with his family in New York last month. Mohamed Khairula says he was detained and questioned for hours by CBP officers after returning home from an overseas trip. Khairula is a longtime U.S. politician and a public school administrator for the city of Prospect Park, and he joins us now to tell his story. Mohamed, we really appreciate you being with us. Uh, could you just start by walking us through what happened when you got off the plane and, and a bit, just a bit about the nature of your trip. I understand that you were on a family vacation with your family in Turkey, visiting some Syrian relatives. Correct. Thank you. Uh, good evening to you and to the audience. Uh, so uh, we were in the back of the plane as we have purchased our tickets last minute uh, due to confusion. Uh, now, when we... Uh, left the airplane, there were Customs and Border Patrol officers asking for everybody to open their passports and green card. And as soon as they opened our documents, uh, they told them, they told us that they want us to come with them. Um, so obviously we are obliged and we start walking. And during the walk, the agent, I guess the head agent, there, there were two agents, was making light of the situation and saying this way you could uh, skip the long lines and you know this shouldn't take long and you know we're just going to ask you a few questions so uh, you know we went in uh, I got my family situated then I went into the questioning room by myself uh, where he asked me about myself my name what do I do uh, and then he started going deeper into uh, questions about my college education, where I work, who's waiting for me outside. And I really felt that the questions were out of uh, context of what his job is. Uh, to the point, at one point, he said, who's waiting for you outside? And I was getting agitated. I said, my mother. And he asked me for her name. So I said, go look it up yourself. Then he went on he understood that i'm agitated at this point and the questions went further who did you meet and i said i met some elected officials in turkey uh because i'm i'm really impressed of how they take care of their communities and we went on then he asked well are you aware of any terrorist cells of any of the cities in turkey and i said uh, no and i felt that the question was weird and then he asked directly did you meet any terrorists in Turkey? And that's when I said no. And I said, I need to be speaking to my lawyer right now. And we ended the conversation there. So, Mohammed, the agents claimed that you had been randomly selected for search and questioning. Do you believe that this was indeed random? Uh, there was absolutely nothing random about this. Uh, as, as I stated, we were in the back of the plane. That means we were the la one of the last people to leave. And this is when these two agents decided that we were the ones to be selected randomly, one of the last people to leave the plane. Uh, moving uh, one month ahead, when we were trying to leave the U.S. to Turkey, uh, we missed our flights on July 3rd because there were a lot of questions by TSA to the uh, ticket agent that caused us to miss our flight. The next day, we were between the counter and an inspection point. We stayed for about five hours where we had the highest level of inspection, including my 14 months infant. He had four S's on his boarding pass, which indicate the highest level of cert. After we passed that point, we got to the gate. There were uh, TSA agents at the gate who inspected us again as we entered the uh, pathway between the gate and the airplane. Uh, the harassment started when we were about to leave uh, the U.S. and it continued as Mohammed, we entered the U.S. I just want to ask you one quick question before, I just want to ask you one quick question. We have to, because I want to highlight just the bigger issue here. You know, I lived in Istanbul mm -hmm. for a number of years and I myself as an American, I also received the quad S on my boarding pass, was subject to those extra screenings. A lot of journalists I know, because of the countries that they've traveled to, 
if, if a country is flagged in the system for being a high risk country, you can also get that. I had that actually on my boarding pass for a couple of years and was subject to extra scrutiny, not to the degree which you describe, I, I will say mm -hmm. that. But how do you, as an elected public official, how do you distinguish profiling versus national security? Well, I, I think in this case, the fact that their story is inconsistent tells you that this is a, a case of profiling between while we're walking to the interrogation room, he said this is a random uh, selection. When he was interviewing me, he admitted that DHS told him to interview me. So he was waiting for me. The fact that there were uh, a, a very extensive uh, search of us twice when we were trying to leave to Turkey, all of this put together indicates that this was not random. This is very targeted for whatever reason. And the sad part is they can't tell a U.S. citizen if he is accused of something. Maybe I could clear my name, uh, but they feel that the Constitution does not exist at the border, which I feel is very wrong. You're absolutely right. You highlight an issue. It's it's really difficult for a lot of people when they do end up on this list to go through a process to clear their names. And that is certainly a problem as it, as it created for me and myself, not taking away from your experience at all. But um, Mohammed Kairula, we appreciate you coming on and telling you. your story and highlighting this issue for us. Thanks for that. Thanks. The U.S. Department of Justice.